Hi everyone and welcome back. In this video I have a second example for you on working with multivariate limits. Specifically, we are interested in studying this limit. The limit as xy goes to 0, 0 of the function xy cubed minus x cubed y divided by x to the 4 plus y to the 4. We are either going to evaluate this limit or we're going to show that it doesn't exist. Now we've already talked about how to show that a limit doesn't exist, right? If we can show that there are two different paths to 0, 0 along which this function is approaching two different values, that's enough. The limit will not exist. If instead we try a bunch of paths and it looks like the function is always approaching the same value, well that's probably pretty good evidence to suggest that the limit does exist. Of course, in this case, we'd still have to find some general argument that tells us that the function really does approach the same value along every single path to 0, 0. That's a tougher problem to solve, but we'll get to that shortly. For now, since we don't really know what's going on with this limit, let's start by trying a few different paths to get a feel for the problem. Okay, well just like in the last example, I'm going to start by looking at the path to the origin where x is constantly 0 along the y-axis. So along the line x equals 0, uh, we're considering the limit as 0y goes to 0, 0 of 0 times y cubed minus 0 cubed times y divided by 0 to the 4 plus y to the 4. Now notice that the numerator here is constantly 0, and so my entire fraction is 0. Therefore, the limit along this line is 0. Okay, well that's just one path, right? That's not enough to conclude that the limit is zero. We should check some more paths. So I'm going to consider the path to the origin where y is constantly zero. In this case, I'm going to compute the limit as x zero goes to zero, zero of x times zero cubed minus x cubed times zero divided by x to the four plus zero to the four. Well, once again, my numerator is zero. So my entire limit is zero and I can't make any conclusions. I've checked two paths, but they have the same value. Well, there are many, many more paths left to check. So why don't we check some other lines? In general, if we're going to the origin, we could take any line y equals mx. That's what I'm gonna check next. Okay, so we've considered the behavior of our function as we approach the origin along two very special lines, x equals zero and y equals zero. But there are tons of other paths left to consider. Even if we just restrict our attention to lines, we could get to the origin along any line y equals mx. Let's see how our function behaves as we travel to the origin along this path. Here, we're going to be considering the limit as x mx goes to 0, 0 of xy cubed, so x mx cubed, minus x cubed y, so x cubed mx, divided by x to the 4 plus mx to the 4. Now this time my numerator is not 0, but I could probably expand it and clean it up a little bit. Specifically, I have the limit as x mx goes to 0, 0, uh, and in the numerator I get m cubed x to the 4 minus mx to the 4 divided by x to the 4 plus m to the 4 x to the 4. Ooh, wow, that's a lot of x to the 4s, right? Actually, I think I can just cancel these out, right? I could factor out that x to the 4 and cancel it with the terms on the bottom. That leaves me with the limit as x mx goes to 0, 0 of m cubed minus m divided by 1 plus m to the 4. Notice that the expression inside my limit is constant, right? It doesn't depend on x. m is the slope of the line. It's a constant. So my limit along this path is m cubed minus m divided by 1 plus m to the 4. Ooh, now this is pretty interesting. This seems to suggest that my limit depends on m. It depends on the slope of the line that I take to the origin. So presumably, I could find two different values of m that give me different values for my limit. Ah, that would be enough to show that the limit doesn't exist. And that's exactly what we're going to do. So I'm going to look for these two different values of m. Why don't we take m equals 0? Um, actually, that gives us the line y equals 0, right? And on the last slide, we saw that the limit in this case is 0. If instead, I'm just going to pick a different number, 
Uh, instead, we're going to pick m equals 2. Well, then that gives me a limit of 2 cubed minus 2 divided by 1 plus 2 to the 4. That's 8 minus 2, 6, divided by 1 plus 16, 17. 6 over 17. Now, as you can see, these limits don't match up. Along this path, I have a limit of 0. Along this path, I have a limit of 6 over 17. Therefore, my limit doesn't exist. Now, you might be wondering, what would we have done next if we had found that these limits were all equal to 0? Well, that's a good question, and we're going to get to that in the next video. Um, the next step might be to try parabolic paths. Approach the origin along the parabola y equals mx squared, or x equals my squared. Two different types of parabolas. Fortunately, we don't have to deal with that situation in this example. Uh, to end this example video, I've included the graph of the function we've been talking about. You can see that 0, 0, here's 0, here's 0, so 0, 0 is the point in the middle. If I approach 0, 0 along this line, well, my function is approaching a value of 0, right? We're coming in along this valley. But if I approach 0, 0 along one of these ridges, well, then my function seems to be approaching a value of, say, 0 0.3. So there you go. The limit doesn't exist, and we can see it in the graph.